I didn't see this. But I've had it told to me by both sides. This is so old I wasn't in Seymour. Seymour is wrestling Sturgeon Bay. And Sturgeon Bay was the powerhouse at that time. And they were in the old middle school gym and they were sitting about like you guys are. You couldn't quite get to the mat without bumping into the crowd. The crowd was right up to the edge of the mat. Everybody was pushing you and shoving you. It was an exciting place to wrestle. The energy was just pouncing off the walls. And it came down to Seymour had the lead. If one of the Roosh twins did not get pinned, Seymour would win. And they started. And Baby Roosh, they were twins, but one was Baby Roosh. What's terrible? You even ask Jim from Plasky. He'd get over to the edge of the mat, get his hands hooked on the mat, and hold that mat as tight as he could. So you couldn't get him back out there to pin him. You could beat the snot out of him, but he wasn't going anyplace. He had those fingers all hooked up in the mat. <coughs> Marty's trying to penalize him, straighten him up, and start him over and everything. But as soon as he puts him back down again, at the edge of the mat. So he penalized him, I think, three times. He weren't disqualified at that time. And Bruce finally had to go out to the center of the mat. And he got pinned. Now comes back to Big Bruce. They're twins. <laughs> Big Bruce is going out there. And it is just a tremendous match. It's a one-point uh, one match going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And boom, Roosh hits his back. And you can't hear anything. The whole crowd, Rrrr! So Marty can't hear the buzzer going off. Roosh is on his back. Sturgeon Bay is driving for the pin. Marty can't hear anything. At that time, cappers didn't run out and tap you. They threw it. Remember when they used to throw that towel at you? So they whipped the towel at Marty, and Marty was down so low, he kind of ducked and let it fly over his head. <laughs> and Tep's going crazy. Tep's a little more demonstrative than I am. So he was absolutely insane. And we got to stop this match, stop this match. And Tep used to wear this ugly, ugly red and white sweater. Oh, the whole Bay Conference uh, threatened to steal it and burn it sometime. It was ugly. So he rips off this sweater and he throws it over the top of Marty. So now Marty's underneath the sweater, going around in circles, trying to call the pin. And the other coach from Sturgeon Bay runs out onto the mat and grabs Marty, and Marty pops his head up just like a gopher. Looks around, goes, Three near fall, no pit. See what wins. <laughs> I always knew Marty was a great ref. <laughs> In reality, Marty's been popping his head up, taking a look around, and making the tough decisions his entire life. He has mentored so many people in this room that it's unbelievable. You know, when he went over to Little Shoot, they didn't have any kind of grade school program. He started recreational wrestling. So Little Shoot was one of the first schools in the state with an organized grade school program that was producing big classes going into the high school all the time. When called upon, he came up and coached in the high school as well as working with those little guys. And at some point in his career, he became the head coach, won the conference five times, and did a great job at that level. But refereeing was kind of calling him. And you, you've heard the other referees talk about him. He was a leader in their association. He made sure young guys got instruction and had our opportunities to participate. Every step of the way. Now's when it gets interesting. Little Shoot lost a coach a couple of years ago and they had a young guy come in. And the young guy was just getting started and young coaches need some help. So at 68 years old, Marty came back into the room and is coaching wrestling again. And I know wrestling will always be healthy as long as we got guys like Marty Mirage stepping back into the room, popping up, making the right call. Come on now, Marty.
I never saw anything like it before. So he had people hanging from the bleachers from that match. And you're right, I couldn't hear a darn thing down there. <laughs> Pleasant memory. <clears throat> <laughs> He also didn't tell you about the time he had me walk me out to the car, and I go, I've never had any problem here, and that was after this match down the years. He said, well, we had a guy here last week that we threatened to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been just there now. <laughs> it's quite an honor to be here. Uh, in my wildest dreams, I never thought this would ever happen. In fact, 10 years ago, Mike Boasi, Larry Boris, in Schaefer, at Thievers and I took a trip to Wausau to see Don Herman being inducted into the Hall of Fame. And as Larry said, Don was really instrumental in getting us to the state as wrestling referees. Uh, so many times you think back about the things that Don did for us. I mean, there were names, Jerry Dufek, Ed Cook, and many more, they were there every year. So there's no way us rookies are going to get in there. So we did, we jumped through the hoops and got in. Thank, thank Don Herman for that. <clears throat> Four years later, we got to go to Green Bay. And we got two of our own in the Hall of Fame here. Mike Blasek and Johnny Shevchek. Now, you know how successful the Luxembourg Casco wrestling program is. And part of that credit goes to John. I think for every year, for about 20 years, he had a son wrestling in that program. So <laughs> it's not just the coaches there. Uh, <clears throat> be standing up here today with the likes of the guys that have been inducted. Uh, Arnie, I could tell a story about the Merrill sectional tournament. Uh, and we all can tell stories about each other here, I'm sure. But the intensity that uh, it was at that meet, at every sectional meet. We gotta hope the referee doesn't screw up what we've been doing all year to get the kid through. And one situation, uh, I wasn't involved, I was a sightseer. Uh, referee walking around with two in his pocket, thinking he was gonna get two more points for a near fall. Remember it vividly. And that would have got the kid through the state. And for some reason, he should have never been walking around with two in his pocket. You know? The takedown. So, anyway, uh, like Larry says, the biggest job of the referee is to make sure you do your best job out there and hopefully you don't screw somebody out of going to state or whatever. <clears throat> I have many people to thank for being up here and see so many familiar faces here. The biggest thank you I have to give to my wife, Katie. Uh, unfortunate for her, We'll be married 50 years this August. <laughs> if you have the opportunity to shake her hand or give her a hug, uh, give her my condolences in order. <laughs> Back in 1988, uh, the opening came at Lewis Street High School, and I had been with these kids from kindergarten on up, so it wasn't. It was going to be an easy transition, but I didn't want to give up refereeing because I really love that. And But the opportunity came, so uh, first thing I did was check on my daughter, well, of course, my wife, too. Check my daughters and say, what do you think? Well, they encouraged me to get in, and it was a great thing. Uh, good experience for me. Uh, my oldest daughter, Missy, daughter, Mindy, and the woman who always called a baby, who was not a baby, <laughs> Melanie. They're here with their husband, here with my grandson, Bailey, who got to play in that, can I say it, Kimberly football team last year, honorable mention there, and baseball. And my two grandsons, or grandson from Colorado, Mason, and Marin. Marin, by the way, is my favorite granddaughter. She'll tell you that, too. <laughs> and she'll say, well, you're the only one. <laughs> okay. Uh, my brother from Colorado, Milt's here. Um, my family from... Little shoot, Kate's sisters are all here. Uh, it's so neat to see everybody here. Um, let's go back a little bit to where it got started. Now, Skinny and I just moved to Oshkosh. They're going to teach at St. Mary's uh, grade school there. Uh, was probably in school 
less than a week and got a phone call from Larry Van Alstein. Larry was athletic director at Lourdes High School. Uh, he asked if I wanted to be a wrestling coach. Well, if you get a chance like that, you got to do it, right? And that year, the camaraderie, uh, the rapport we had between the wrestlers and myself was just unbelievable. Uh, I had my first state champ there, Pat Downing, who was here. I had my, would have been second state champ, but they didn't have uh, technical falls back then. So he lost a very close match. He was their second runner-up and many other placements we had in that tournament. <clears throat> also on that team, and these people are well-renowned in their own work for what they have accomplished for Oshkosh, <coughs> Woods Wrestling, and for our area for the Christmas holiday tournament on the water, Don and Val Zemke. Just unbelievable people, and what, how fortunate it was for me to be involved with them back then. Uh, I'd like to thank Mike Blasek, uh, the things he's done for the state, uh, as much as Don Herman accomplished, I believe Mike has taken a, a step further. The liaison between coaches, referees, uh, the coaches have something to say, they can call Mike and get Mike to look into it and give them an answer back. Uh, rule interpretation, uh, fantastic. I think Wayne Lebecki calls him to get, uh, what, do we, what do you think about this? Of course, he used to work with Arbel, uh, with Britain, and uh, of course, Arbor's pretty well retired now. I'd like to thank Bruce Schaefer, uh, the committee chairman, uh, my partner in, in umpiring softball. Uh, we worked several tournaments together, always, and all the work he has done. I greatly appreciate it. Jeff Goyle, Jeff Goyle's on the committee. He's the coach over at Lourdes. Him and I were coaches together back at Little Shoe in our, when we had our prime. I'd like to thank Mike Schumacher, uh, who also coached with us. Mike has had state now two times, and will be going back as the, as the referee. And then finally, I'd like to thank uh, Todd Bowman, who's also on the committee. Todd now is the uh, coach at Little Shoot, and Todd uh, has been with these kids for 20-some <coughs> years, and uh, has a great rapport from them. In his first year as coach, he had seven kids through the sectional, and two down the state, and one of the state qualifiers this year. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank the, uh, the coaches who I coached with back in the East Central Conference. Uh, we had quite a group, as back in those days, you could do a little bit more than you can today without getting in too much trouble. We used to meet over at Blaine Felsman's house in Oshkosh before the uh, conference meeting. Uh, Don Hill from Winnick County, Chuck Peters from Opaca, uh, Kevin Bussey from Amro, uh, and Dave Moe from Hortonville. By the way, they're all here, so thank you guys much for that. In closing, not to get too winded here, <clears throat> I would like to close, if I can find it here, with a Robert Frost poem. When in the heart of men is it less than a treason to go off the with a drift of things and to bow and accept let, let's start that all over again when in the heart of man is it less than a treason to go with the drift of things to bow and accept with the grace of reason to accept the end of a love or a season and this is not here thank you very much